Rudolph the Red Nosed oh. Reindeer. Reindeer. Had a very shiny nose. Like a light bulb. And if you ever saw it, saw it. you would even say it glows. It glows. <laughs> It's been two, three months, three months, couple, two, three months. How many times are you going to say that? I don't know. So it is December. I think last time we podcasted, it was September. August. It was Labor Day weekend. Yeah. So it's been a while. Let's introduce ourselves for those who might not know us. I'm Kelly. I'm Carrie. And this is the Notorious Podcast. Long awaited, since returned. Here we are, back at it. And it is definitely weird coming back. Especially when you're dressed in matching Christmas sweaters. It's Christmas! I love Christmas. And I hate it. It's my least favorite holiday. I would rather have tax day four times a year than Christmas once a year. But I can't wait. When you're friends with Carrie and she thinks matching outfits are an idea, you just kind of go with it because, you know, you got to support your friends. I'm so excited. It's that time of year. I will not be singing. I will eat Christmas cookies. We did put a tree up at my house. But um, other than that, you know, not really in the Christmas spirit yet. Yeah. But I can fake it till I make it. So. So we're so excited to be back. Yeah. We're going to start with a little bit of a life update because it's been a while. And... Yeah, why don't you start and tell them part of the reason we've been gone so long. Yeah, so the majority of the reason we have not recorded in three months is my fault. I am, well, I just finished on Friday a 250-hour internship for my master's program, and it is the final of three internships. So I did 700 and 50 hours of internships, something crazy like that. And my internship was at a behavioral health center near where we live. I was honored to be able to work with an amazing staff and some of the coolest kids that I have ever been able to work with. The staff was incredible. I acted as their behavioral health consultant. So they took programs that I wrote and implemented them and I got to see things happening. Behavior was changing, kids were being successful, and it was awesome. I am exhausted though, because I did that on top of my full-time teaching job. So I was working my teaching job 40 hours a week and then interning 30 hours a week. Her day was literally like six to eight yeah, every day. Yeah, six in the morning, I'd leave for work and I'd get home at eight o'clock at night. So I haven't seen my husband, I haven't seen my dogs, I haven't seen Carrie until so you like can this imagine, weekend. it'd be pretty hard to podcast when you work. Yeah. So All that. I, I did want to say thank you to everyone who reached out over Instagram, especially around Thanksgiving. We had a couple people message and just make sure we were okay and that we were still friends and that the podcast was still a thing. It is still a thing. It's just very hard to squeeze it in when you're also trying to carry on a full-time life. Yeah. And I haven't been quite as busy, but I but have But you have big busy. news. I got a job. Yay. So last time we podcasted, I was I getting ready. Off. I'm sweating. <laughs> Sorry. I was getting ready to substitute, and I got a job right at the end of September as a cyber school teacher. So Yay. I'm teaching first grade at a cyber school, so it's very different. And um, yeah, I really love it. It's it's just very different. So um, it's yeah, a it's exciting. Like, we've been talking a lot about that. That. 
cyber school is like the best and worst of teaching because you get to interact with the kids which you love and you get to miss out on some of the politics that are involved in teaching especially with this being an election year it's been um, an interesting time to be a teacher in a public school yeah but you have to tell the, t the Thanksgiving story about the kid who was drawing during your lesson oh <laughs> yeah so it was actually me who was drawing <laughs> So we have, um, basically it's a lot of me talking to parents on the phone and through email and giving them the tools they need to help their children. Because as you can imagine, a six and seven year old on the computer needs a lot of guidance. <laughs> they don't just throw them in there and like, you know, hey, good luck. Um, so yeah, I get to meet with them in live lessons and I see them on webcam and I get to talk to them on the mic and they're so cute with their little headsets and they're just <laughs> adorable. But um, the one day... I don't know, we were having tech issues, like, that happens a lot, you know, you can manage in a cyber school, and I just drew a little turkey while I was waiting, because, you know, I do those things. You posted and that, and I thought a kid drew it. It was you? Oh, I was like, that, that was a good turkey. turkey. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, turkey. you, you try drawing on with your mouse. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably know what we're talking about, because I posted on Instagram. But, yeah, we, Kelly and I were talking about how... Like she said, it's kind of, I don't have to deal with some of the behaviors, but I also really miss being with the kids physically in a room with them and teaching them. So we'll see what happens, but it's a job, so it's good for now. Yeah. So, so that's yeah. our life update. Yeah. Lots of things going on, but we're hoping to do this more regularly now because my yeah. internship is over. So I will literally have 30 more hours a week of time to do things. You're going to be so bored. You're going to be like, no, I'm not. what do I do with myself? I went today and I renewed my gym membership, so I'm going to start doing that three days a week. I have a million knitting projects lined up that I would like to get done. It's finally cool enough that I can start spinning again. I don't think any of that will be just lazing around time. Probably not, especially anyways, in December. That's so, what we've been doing. Thanks for waiting forever. Yeah. And for coming back. If you're watching, to catch up thanks with for us. watching. Also, yeah. by the way. Yep. Wait. I went there. I went there, guys. I refuse to put mine on. <laughs> bah humbug. Bah, bah humbug. So we're gonna start with FO. FO. Okay. And you so, should have seen the big, huge bag that Kelly brought over to my house. Well, when things. you haven't podcasted in three months, like, I really felt like I wasn't getting anything done, but I did get some stuff done. Okay. I've been knitting a lot more on my lunch break and in the car waiting for things. So I finished this. Whoa. Dun, dun, dun. Huge. And, and it's, this is not blocked. What kind of shawl is that? So this is the, I'm going to hold it up so that you can see the beautiful colors and my lace. This is the Cameo shawl. Um, and the yarn, it's actually striped in here, but I didn't, the yarns I used were really similar. So this gray is from Fiberarium, which is a local dyer who sells from the Millworks, which is a collection of artists who have studios in a warehouse in Harrisburg. So this is their gray color. And then the crazy gray galaxy looking color is from um, Marigold Jane yarns. And I bought that at Knitter's Day Out in Summerdale. I don't have the name of the colorway on me, but I think it's something like galaxy. But this was really fast to knit, and it has, this part was the most obnoxious, is the Pico bind off, but it's yeah. really cute. And you don't have to do this. This pattern was actually gifted to me by Allie and Abby, Allie and Abby, from the Get Lit and Knit yeah. podcast. They sent this to me as a thank you for a swap, and I've been waiting to knit it. I'm so glad I did, and I think I'll make more. Maybe cool. one with a lot more color variation. Because these two colors, like I said, are super similar. Oh, it's two different colors? I yeah. didn't realize so that. Yeah, so you start with just this one color. So this is one skein. And then in the middle here, it's actually striped. Now that you said, you can tell this is a different And then the bottom is color. 
a solid. So next time I do it, I'm gonna do one that's an obvious solid, It'll and then the other purple. one that's variegated. Cool. So that's one of my finished objects. Should I do one of mine while alternating? Sure. Okay. So I finished a pair of socks from the many Felici games that I order. And Those this is them. so cute. Thanks. They're just plain Felici socks, and I'm kind of not really happy with the way that came out. It's just because of where the stripe um, fell when I did the fish lips kiss. You should do uh, afterthought heels then. I know. I should. This one looks I good. I that. I would never do an afterthought heel. I know. I don't <laughs> think I would either. But I did these two at a time, toe up, which is getting to be my new favorite way of knitting Ooh, socks. Can I touch them? Yeah. <gasps> They're soft. Yeah. Felici did you block super these? soft. I didn't block them yet. Nice. Um, do you know what color this is from Felici? Kaleidoscope. So this cute. is Kaleidoscope, and it's super quick to knit up plain vanilla socks two at a time. And I did a bind off, um, Jenny's Just super stretchy, stretchy bind, bind off. I actually had done a plain bind off, and I couldn't even get them on. So then I had to undo it and do a stretchy bind off. Um, I'm finding with socks, now that I'm starting to wear some of my hand knit, I like wearing vanilla socks better than patterned socks. Me Because patterned socks, I have ginormous feet which we've talked about if you've watched before like my feet are huge and you'll see in one of my finished objects that I really do have gigantic feet so once I put my gigantic feet and a pattern sock in a shoe I feel like it rubs and then I take the sock off and I have like the pattern indented these are so much more comfortable for yeah. sure and they're I'm easier it. so you have to teach me two at a time I know and it's not even that bad it's really fun actually. I'd like to do my Christmas break would be two at a time socks Put it on your goals list. Other finished objects? Talking about vanilla socks. Talking about, this is literally just the foot of the sock. You should see how hairy the sock is. I won't show Dog you that because I wore them yesterday. So <laughs> this is my tiny little, I did a two by two ribbing and like not even ten rows of knitting. We, I did the Kiss the Partridge heel from Shauna Stitches. She let us test knit that and it's awesome. And then this is literally the whole size of foot. Like, it's the size of my forearm. That's my feet. I wear a size 12. So this is why I think I stick with just vanilla socks. This yarn is um, Patton's Croy FX in Clover. So it looks like static on a TV. Cool. Please excuse my awful nails. They need done. I really like I love that this yarn. that you said. Static on a TV. Yeah. Here's a funny story. It does look pixelated. This one is like 10 rows longer than this one, but when you wear them, you can't tell. How did that happen? By accident? Because I forgot that I had done 10 rows, and this one only did five. So there's my other finished object. Awesome. So it's been a long time, but I finished this a long time ago. Ah! <laughs> this is my split back tank. It's cute. I'm going to put it on over my... The ends aren't even woven in. Well, I finished it, and it, and then at that point, it was too... Cold. Wow, this is great. <laughs> da, da, da. Don't look at my... It kind of looks like an apron right now. You'd have to style it, I think. So. So, yeah, that was from a cow we did over the summer in August. And, um, I'll probably wear it when it gets warm. Obviously, with, like, some kind of tank top under it. A right? cami under it. Probably. <laughs> It'll be a little risque otherwise. Could, um, somebody who finished theirs in our Ravelry group, which is the Notorious Podcast on Ravelry, um, she said she's going to wear hers as a bathing suit cover-up. Should we yeah. announce the winners now since we're talking about it? Uh, sure. Okay. So we never announced winners for the cow because we are the worst. And it was right as the school year was getting started. So we did have two people finish. Other than Carrie, I stopped mine. The second I saw Carrie's and the other two, I was like, I know I'm not. it's not going to fit me well. I'm not going to ever wear it, so I'm not going to finish it. But we did have two winners. And sorry that it took us so long. Mm -hmm. You will get your prizes. <laughs> Better late than never, right? So the first winner is BB Knitter 1. Yay! Her name is Beth. Yay! Yay! Can I show her this bag? Yeah. So you're getting a bag similar to this. Not the same exact colors. I think yours is lighter. And if you want to see it, we showed it on the other podcast. Yeah, you can watch the other one. I just forgot it at home. So 
message me on Instagram or Ravelry at Dog Hair Knits and I will get that out to you. The other person that finished was Devin and her Ravelry is Devi0894. Yay! Yay! <laughs> and I'm going to send you a skein of yarn that I spun myself. It'll be a skein of hand spun by me. So we, Congratulations, thank ladies. you for finishing and for being patient. Thanks they for didn't participating. get pushy at all and say, "Hey, I finished this, and you didn't send me anything." They were so patient. With so us. nice, like so, all of you. And we did also want to thank um, Tara. Michelle Mitchell's Creations, Tara, for the bag donation that we're gonna send out. So just send me your address, and I will put those in the mail to you, and it'll be like a surprise Christmas gift because yes. you probably thought nothing was ever gonna come with that. <laughs> Do you have any other FOs? I do. Um, so the next one I'll talk about is I made a bunny uh, for a friend who is having a baby. She's due in January. And I'll insert a picture here. So he's a little bunny boy, I guess. And he has a little sweater and little <laughs> shorts. And I think he's adorable and he came out really well. So that's one of my finished objects. And I have one more, which is my sweater. This is my my other finished object. I know I showed this at one point, uh, probably in the summer, but I finished it for good, guys. So I added buttons and I added pockets. Let me hold it up so you can see the lace panel. Yeah. Ooh! <laughs> I wasn't sure about the pockets, if I wanted to add them or not, but I'm so glad I did because I think they're adorable. So, yeah, and I actually wore this to work one day, and it's wearable, and it's awesome. It so. feels store-bought. I know, it's crazy! And it was one of my uh, goals for from last year to make a sweater this year, and I did! So, I'm, I'm going to set a goal to make another sweater in 2017. I'm so. doing a sweater, too. Uh, ah! <laughs> from the Mater magazine. I picked it out this morning. Uh, yeah, me too. So... While we were looking for the sweater, I remembered that we have emergency snacks. Christmas themed. They have us. marshmallows on them. They have peeps. It's a snowman Santa? and a Christmas yeah, Santa. tree. See, that's how much I know about Christmas. That's Santa. <laughs> so yeah. Do you want yours? Kinda. Do you have any other FOs? No. Okay. Let's put these up here. Okay. For later. Um. Oh, so very sweet. next we have whips. So we have a new title, and it's this is what we're whipping up. That was <laughs> really good. good timing. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, um, all right. Why don't you go first? So we have a question from our Ask Me Anything thread that we'll answer later in regards to Christmas knitting. But the short and long of it is, yes, we Christmas knit. Um, I was just watching KT from Inside Number 23 this morning, and she was talking about how she wasn't Christmas knitting this year, and she feels so much more relaxed. Oh. I hear, because... This, it is stressful. I'll get to that part later, but um, this is a gift knit that I started yesterday! Mm. It is the Knitted Triangle Shawl pattern. She started this yesterday. Started this yesterday. I'm proud of myself. This is what happens when you don't do an internship. And I love, I this makes me want to knit everything in neutral colors, even though my spirit color is tie-dye. Spirit color, like spirit animal. My spirit color is tie-dye. This makes me want spirit to knit color. all the neutral things. And this is a gift, right? This Did is a gift. Already? I'm not going to say who it's for because I don't want to ruin it because I know they watch. But this is a gift knit. And it came from a Karen cake. If you have Michael's stores near you, you know that this weekend was... You can see. Me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. This weekend was Doorbuster weekend, which is basically Michael's way of saying, let's move out the Christmas stuff so we can put out the um, Valentine's Day decorations. Because it's December 3rd, so it's about time. But the Karen cakes were on super, super sale. It's and this fourth, is actually. almost 400 yards of yarn in a cake. And they come in all sorts of different colors. The pattern that I'm knitting, like I said, is the Triangle Knitted Shawl, and it is a free pattern from michaels.com. If you go on their website, it's B-81800. We'll put that down here somewhere. Um, but they actually showed this. When you buy the yarn, there's a bunch of patterns that you can make, 
and they're all for free on Michael. So it's so smart. I just took a picture, and you can actually scan the QR code, and it'll download the pattern right oh, to your cool. phone. Oh, cool. I mean, Michael's has it going on. They do. The best part of going to Michael's, I always drag my husband there. He actually really likes it, but there were so many Scroogey husbands at Michael's yesterday. So many men were walking by, get me out of here, like oh my pushing God, the car. That's so funny. Because it was a hot mess in there. I'm sure. It was a madhouse. Everything was 70% off. I bought tiny lit Christmas trees. I don't even like Christmas. I was like, those are basically free, so I have to buy them. I went shopping early this morning, right when stores opened, just so I could avoid some of the crowds. Ugh. It was still crowded, but not yeah. nearly as but much. But I did buy enough yarn yesterday to make all of the Christmas gifts that I have scheduled to make now that I have time for it. But I did have to pay Chris back with like a half an hour at the video game store just because we spent so long at Michael's. So that's one of my, um, what I'm whipping up, a little Christmas show. Um, one that I'm doing, actually had to put these on hold because... Um, so oh, starting knitting. Christmas knitting. But these are socks for myself. It's another pair of two at a time, Felici, and this is the Sprinkles colorway. And yeah, it's basically socks that exactly are just the like same. Patton's Queer makes this. one called Spring something or Candy yeah, yeah, yeah. something. Sorry. But they're a little bit different. They're not as cool as the Felici. These are cooler. Sorry. Two at a time. So I think I figured out I'm right at the point where I need to put in a heel. So who knows? Maybe I'll try an afterthought heel. But these are on the back burner probably until after Christmas because, you know, you got to get that Christmas knitting underway. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So my other work in progress, if you follow me on Instagram, you've heard the saga of these socks. I had, oh, this is actually a half object. Yours feels different. Yours feels tighter. Because I'm a really tight knitter. We learned that when I finished that pair of socks for you and the top of the sock was really loose and the bottom was really tight for Jamie, for sample. Oh, yeah. So if you follow me on Instagram, there's a picture of me holding up another sock that looks like this. I tried to do the geek socks and my slip stitches were so tight I could not even get the sock over my toes. I was so mad. I didn't realize it until I had knit both of the tubes with the toes, with the afterthought heels and everything. And I am not good at... You don't at, try them on as you go? I couldn't try them on as I went because I was doing them on double pointed needles. And it was like a giant tube. I just couldn't get my brain around it. Mm. And because Felici puts you like it hypnotizes you to just keep going. So it didn't take me long to get them done. But the second I put them, off, got them off the needles, I was like, this doesn't fit. I don't know why I kept going with the second one. But then I tried to give them to my mom. She wears a size 6. Her feet are tiny, and they wouldn't even fit over her toes. So I don't know what I did wrong. But my slip stitches were really tight. But that's your... That's so up. I redid them. This sock took me three days of knitting at lunch. It's just a vanilla sock with the Kiss the Partridge heel again. I'm, like, really into this heel. The heel yarn is Magnolia Leaf. It is a unicorn tail that my husband bought me while he was traveling for work. So yeah. Cool. And I am this far on the second sock. And again, these will have to wait until after Christmas because they're for me. Cool. Cool. Cool um, story. Cool story. Any Thanks other works in progress? I have a couple more. Um... I think I'm going to wait to share the other ones in the spinning part, but I'll share okay. this one now. Um, so I, ma I make little bunnies. If you've been watching us for a long time. Our first episode was like 85 rabbits. I made all of these. And my Nana has wanted a bunny for a long time. I'm pretty sure she doesn't watch this. Dang it. Did you think she does? Probably well, not. Just tell her not to watch until after. So I'm making her a bunny and... If you want to see, this is what it looks like in progress. So, <laughs> this is the head. It looks very this not bunny-ish. This head bunny -ish. is actually finished. I just have to stuff it and whatnot. And then here's the ears. Those are cute. Yeah. Two little bunny ears. And currently, I'm actually in the middle of a row. This is part of the body. 
So that tweed yarn is adorable. Is that I from Knit Picks? Yes, and it's, it's super cute. soft. It's perfect for making bunnies. I've made like a thousand bunnies, as you probably already know. And so she's gonna have a little purple dress, and so cute. That's for my Nana's Christmas gift. So. Yay, Nana! Everyone yeah. loves a Nana. Everyone does. All right. So there's are all of our what we're whipping up. Yeah. Okay. Next up. Oops! I did, did it, it again. again. Our oops, I did it again. Still not singing. Nope. I'll sing again. Okay. If I sang that song at work, the kids would have no idea what that was. I, I sang a song the other day from Greece, and they're like, "What's that? We're we're that old? An antique." Um. So yeah, this is our acquisition section. Things or that we've got, enhancement. or bought, or have been given. Okay, do you want to do these ones first? Twins. Yes. Yeah. Twinsies. Dun, da, dun. Da, da, dun. <laughs> we got Mrs. Brown's bag. Mm -hmm. We both mm -hmm. got the mm -hmm. same fabric because we're in love with it. And I got the tall one, but she got the short one. Fitting. But <laughs> yours is like for socks, right? Yeah, this is her sock well, sack size. Sock I, sack mine's size. For, mine has socks in it too, but. I think this, this one she the calls medium the one. medium wedge, and this is called like the sock sack. Oh, here yours is. Love the yellow um, leather. Cord. I just love that. Didn't someone paint this for her fabric? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think, think some. So. No, I think somebody created this for her. I don't know. Her bags are awesome, though. Everyone knows that, which is super cool. So. And I always feel like they're an impulse buy, and then I feel really guilty until it comes, and I was like, all right, I'm not guilty anymore because it's awesome. Cute. So Very thank cute. you, Mrs. Brown's bags. Yeah, for Jody. just being awesome and making from the. Stuff. Grocery Girls. Grocery Girls podcast. So that's a whip that Kelly and I both had in common. And oops, I did it again, you mean? We did not work on these in progress. Oh, yeah. That. Okay. So inside my Mrs. Brown bags is a dreaming cast on. Da, 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 da. Look at it. You could call it your bumblebee. So I'm Socks. trying to get the sun to calm down a little. This is Yakagani Yarns. And the dyer's name is Carrie, and she does watch our podcast. Hi, Carrie! Hi, Carrie! And she has a podcast of her own that she just started called Knit Up the River, or Knit Up River, Knitting Up River. Check it out on YouTube. I went to a fiber festival slash class thing. It was called Knitter's Day Out. It's in Somerdale, PA, once every September. And I was walking through, and I hear, Kelly! And I didn't know anyone there, and I turned around, and she's like, oh, I watch your podcast. She had incredible yarns. These are her sock sets. Does it have a name? This one is called Grello. Ooh. Love a Grello. And it comes paired with this little dark gray mini for the Perfect. heels and toes and cuffs. And I love a good Grello, because yellow is one of my favorite <laughs> colors, and gray just goes so well with it. Yay. So yeah, that was one of my acquisitions. And then she has a lot more than I do. This is just my other one. Because if you can't knit it, buy it. <laughs> this is by Juniper Moon. And this is Pure Extra Fine Baby Alpaca. And the color just has a number, sadly. But I think this is a beautiful color. And it's, ooh, it's showing so really pretty. well. It's um, super soft. Looks great with my skin tone. <laughs> what are you going to knit me out of it? I, I I'm going to knit question. myself a shawl I think. Well, I look really white when I put this on my face. <laughs> so maybe not a shawl so close to your face like that. I'm gonna knit myself. soft it is. Because <gasps> it's alpaca. Or as Chris likes to say, palpacas. Palpaca. And if you don't follow Juniper Moons, I'm just gonna hold this up because I have longer arms. If you do not follow Juniper Moons on Instagram, you should. I'm 95% sure it's them. Someone is making a knit stitch cookie press Ooh. and a cookie press that has little sheep on it. Seriously? I want Yeah, that. I think it is them. Very cute. Check them out on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. So my other oops, I didn't buy. My birthday was in October. Yay. And Happy birthday. 
I told you. <laughs> but we did. There's a lot of singing um, in this episode. Just from you. I am not singing. <laughs> People would be like, oh God, please make it oh stop. Oh God, please stop. <laughs> my ears are bleeding. Um, right around my birthday was probably the most stressful time of my internship. Uh, I'll wait. <laughs> um, continue. So I was like not in the celebratory mood at all, but my husband took care of me in the fiber world and it was awesome. I can't show the yarn for this because I already made it into a barley hat. This, oh, mm, yeah, that doesn't get, uh, oh, mm. no, no, no. <laughs> so I do wear it with that end just tucked in, but this was one of the skeins of yarn he it bought. looks different on there. It was... It's like a woolen spun, so it was a single ply, but really chunky in some spots, thick and thin. I don't have the yarn label, but I will text you the information, and she'll put it in, and it'll go down here somewhere. So yeah, there's that. That was a gift that he got me. And then he also got me this. I am not going to try to pronounce it, because I am not good at Can I see? stuff like that. Arakanya. <laughs> <laughs> so it is this oh, marled I all different that. colors the <sighs> fiber content is a really cute hat 100% wool 193 yards 100 gram skein super cute hat so yeah I think I'm either going to do a hat or a cowl or uh, maybe mittens 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 and the other are you going to show him yeah <laughs> How so all of these adorable. products came from, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the shop. What it, but tell Ubiquitous. Them, tell them the name of him. The store is Ubiquitous in Lidditz, PA, and this is Shep. Shep the sheep. And he was- Look at his eyes, they're so dark. When Chris went to shop, he was like, I couldn't help, there's a whole basket of them. So he said he almost bought a couple because he didn't want it to be lonely. This will be perfect for a knitting room. It's in my knitting room. At home. I need a knitting room. Yeah. It's in my knitting and spinning room at home. Which is technically our spare bedroom that has my spinning wheel in it. So this is Shep, and he was also a birthday present. I just love his little legs. Me. So yeah, that was... Those are um, my acquisitions. And I also said that I went to Michael's Doorbusters. My students at school, we are having a door decorating contest for the holidays, and I taught a couple of my kids to knit last year and this year, so they thought we should do a knitting-themed door. <laughs> These are size 50 knitting needles, because, this is hold This the those. coolest thing ever. I will be knitting a giant stocking. No! For our class door. The, the kids want to have the stocking, and then we're going to take pictures of them jumping to make it look like they're jumping out of the stocking. How or do like, you even... I, like, how do you even... I don't even know. Honestly, this feels like a bathrobe. This is a uh, brunette blanket big. I cannot imagine being under a blanket. Like, this is impressive weight. It's so heavy. But, you know, when a sixth grader... Speaking grade, of... Can I just say real quick a tidbit? You're shaking the whole thing. Real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I asked for a weighted blanket for Christmas. You did? Mm -hmm. Do you know you can make them? But I'm lazy. I have one in my classroom. I could let you borrow it. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a giant stocking for our door. I don't know the pattern yet. I think I might just make it up. Coolest teacher ever. We better win is all I'm saying. But some people are, like, doing their whole hallway. We have a Polar Express hallway. Middle schoolers love a theme. I love a theme. So, yeah, that was one. And then, sorry. When you have a door buster, I just think of Jody Brown. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought these. Jody, our, you will appreciate that, won't you? Two more Karen cakes. What if that is our freeze frame? <laughs> Two more Karen cakes. This one's for me someday when I get to knit things for myself. And this one will also be that triangle shawl in a gift knit. Very nice. And the last thing I bought, he's not out of the package yet. <laughs> this is a grumpy sheep that poops jelly beans. 
Because when you see a grumpy sheep that poops jelly beans, you have, you have, to, have to buy it. it. And I'm going to put it at my desk because I work with kids who sometimes have grumpy days. Well, all kids have grumpy days, not just the kids I work with. Um, but this will be a really good icebreaker on some of those days where you're just stuck in a grump. Have a jelly bean. Okay, so, so are, that was all your... Yeah, that's everything that I've recently purchased or been gifted. Okay, awesome. Anything else from you? No. No? Moving right along. So this is going to be our Just Keep Spinning and also a little bit of dyeing segment. So for spinning, I have my spinning wheel upstairs at my house on the second floor. Sorry, I'm looking for something that I can find. Oh, take your time. We'll just wait. Spinning wheel is upstairs up until about the end of September, we had really, really hot weather. We had 70 degree weather into November here in central PA. Mm -hmm. It was hot as all get out. And I don't have air conditioning at my house. So that spinning was not an option. Like I was getting sweaty, the fiber was sticking. It just wasn't happening. Just last week, I was able to get upstairs and start spinning. So I'm spinning on fiber right just now. Last week. Just last week. But this was another gift for my birthday. It's very pretty. Look this is Frobjus fiber, Fibers Polworth Wool Top in the Cathedral colorway. Wow. Chris picked this out himself. Showing He's got really great color sense. And I have no idea what this is going to spin up like, but... It'll be interesting to see. I think it's great. It reminds me of a stained glass window. You have to spin me something. I spun you that... Uh, naked oh, yeah. stuff to dye. We haven't done it yet. That's true. So, anyways, what are you dying? So dying to see it. That's loud. What bag is it in? Did I ever tell you about the time I texted my supervisor one. and asked if he was yeah, still you did. dying? And you told them too. I'm pretty sure. Sorry. Okay. So, spice, so nothing new. I did my first Christmas dying, and I'll put a picture here of what it looked like in the skein. Um, but I had to wind it up because I have to get started on my Christmas knitting. So oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Look, I sang. See? You did! I'm pretty sure that's the title of this colorway. Oh, Christmas tree. Because I wanted it to be green and with, you know, like string lights. In the dye pot, it really did look like a tree with string lights on and it. And this is what it looks like knit up. I'm, I don't, I, I'm pretty happy with it. I was a little bit disappointed because it did get a little bit muddied. Um, but this is only like my third time dying, so I think I have an idea of how to improve it. So, I mean, you can't get better until you make some mistakes. But I really like it. Actually, I love it. And these are going to be socks for my mom for Christmas. So it's super special, I think, because I dyed it and knit it. So That would be so cool. I'm really excited to give that to her. And I have another idea for... Uh, Christmas dye or wintery dye. So hopefully next time I'll be able to show you that. Cool. Yeah. And that's all for that segment, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So next we're going to talk about book bag slash podcasts. Um, I just finished a book called Small Great Things by Jodi Picot or Picot, however you want to say it. And it's really good. She's my favorite author. It's all about kind of race, and it's like a very taboo topic, but it's a really good book, and it's very eye-opening, so if you like her books, I would recommend it. And right now, I'm reading this book, Buffering, by Hannah Hart, and she is a YouTuber. YouTuber. She does My Drunk Kitchen, and she does some other things now. She's known... To get up she on started the other doing things. My Drunk Kitchen, which I don't watch, but... This is like her memoir, and I love reading memoirs and learning about other people's lives. And it's really insightful, and she goes through like kind of a rough period growing up. So it's a really good read, so I would recommend it. All right, so my book bag for this week is actually a couple of non-knitting podcasts that I've been listening to. Podcasts are great because you can listen to them in the car on your way to do things. And last night... Um, Due to the video game store experience, Chris had control of the TV in the house playing uh -huh. a new NBA video game he got. And it's nice. He never gets to sit down and do that. So I was upstairs listening to podcasts. This is the first one. 
It's Women of the Hour, and it's hosted by Lena Dunham, the creator and one of the stars of the show Girls. She is awesome. She's very, very opinionated, outspoken. She sticks to her guns. So I would caution you that if we have different viewpoints, this might not be the podcast for you. But I do encourage you to at least try an episode. The way her episodes are broken out is into categories. So she has one on body image, which was awesome. She talked to a bunch of different people who have had different experiences, um, positively and negatively, with body image. She has an episode on friendship. She has an episode, her most recent one was on religion, which I thought was fascinating because my family has a certain religious background. I married into a different religious background. I have my own religious views, as we all do. So I just appreciate her honesty in some of the segments she has. The other podcast that I've been listening to, I'm going to do two more. I have some too. Since you said about podcasts, that reminds me of mine. I don't know if you can see that. Lore. This is spooky. I was listening to this in the shower the other day and I had to stop and turn it off because I was afraid a murderer was going to come in and kill me in the shower. So the first episode isn't an indicator of... No. Um, Because I tried to listen to the first one and it was about vampires and... So each episode is a half an hour and it's the real life story behind like urban legends or other kind of spooky stories. Not all like boo scary, more like psychologically scary, which I love. So lore is really good if it's uh, noon and you're driving in the car and the sun is out. If the sun goes down, like, definitely don't listen to that one. The other one that I would suggest is a Nerdfest one for me. It's not going to show up because it's on my phone. This is ABA Inside Track. ABA stands for Applied Behavior Analysis, and that's what I'm studying right now for grad school. This is Nerdfest. It overviews research articles on different behavior management um, methods, but it also works with if you have a child that has a disability or has a behavioral disorder or if you know someone that has a child or a family member with behavioral disorder, I would recommend this because it's funny, it moves quickly enough that you don't get bored, but it prevents presents you with useful information that you could use right away. Because we have had a few people reach out to me through Instagram saying, oh, I heard you work with kids with autism on the podcast. I have a son with autism. I have a nephew. I have a brother. I'd love to talk more about it. So check out that podcast. Blah, blah, blah. Your turn. Awesome. She was not listening to any of that. I was trying to find my podcast. Do you know the the one? So I've been listening to, my ride to work is about a half hour. Um, So I've been listening to podcasts on the way to and from work. And for some reason I find like murder mystery, missing case, missing person cases. (laughs) And, like, crime stories interesting to listen to. I don't know why. Because they're kind of more. Because your life is so boring. (laughs) But I really liked this one. It's called In the Dark. And it was actually a very recently done podcast. And it's about, um... I love donuts. (laughs) The end. Thanks for that. Thanks for watching. We love donuts. (laughs) Oh, it's about the Jacob Wetterling kidnapping that happened in Minnesota, and it kind of follows along, and it was a really interesting podcast. I also really like listening to a podcast called Serial. Have you heard of that one? Oh, I've heard of that one. That one's really good. It looks like this, and I think they do that one on NPR. Yeah, I listened to the whole first season. And what did you just do? I listened to the whole first season, and I'm on the second season, which it's all right. It's a little bit, I don't know. And then there's one more that I really like, and it's called The Happy Hour with Jamie Ivey. And it's kind of, um, like, she always has a guest, and it's kind of like two women just chatting over coffee or something, and they talk about different life events and things. And um, they are both Christians, so sometimes they'll throw in things about God. But um, it's also kind of general, too. So if you like just kind of chatter podcasts, that's a good one. So yeah, that's what's in our book bag Yay. or in our earbuds. That's a good one. In our earbuds. <laughs> in our earbuds. So we did the winners of the cow. 
Um, our last thing is questions oh, yeah. from you. We haven't asked us anything thread on our Ravelry page, and we did get a couple questions of what happened to you guys, when are you coming <laughs> back? So we did send a, out a couple of answers that we were filming today, and we just got really, really busy with our lives and grad school and big girl jobs. But we did have um, one question from Moogle Knits. Her name is Lindsay. Hi, she, Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Thanks for being patient and waiting for an answer. Hope yeah. you get to see this. <laughs> yeah. Um, she had asked us, her 16-year-old daughter is getting ready. Or niece, maybe. Niece. Niece. Is getting ready to start um, teacher training, which I was like, where do you live that you can start teacher training <laughs> at when you're 16? 16. She must have an internship. Sometimes high yeah. schools do that. I did that when I was in high school. I Mine didn't have that option. Which would be my first suggestion for um, if you are considering going into teaching. I guess we should say that the rest of the episode is going to be just chatter. Yeah, so if you're if you're just into the nitty gritty, <laughs> you might want to just peace out now. Thanks for watching if that's you. <laughs> but anyways, so if you are interested in going into teaching or you have a son or daughter that's interested in, to, in becoming a teacher... You might want to get your public speaking skills down, um, but look for opportunities to volunteer in your high school. Uh, Special Olympics is an excellent opportunity. I went all four years of high school as a buddy. Another program that I would recommend looking into is Best Buddies. That program encourages same-age peer buddying. So when you're in college, you are buddied with a college-aged person in the community that has a disability, and you go out and do typical life things, like going to the movies, um, going out to eat at a restaurant, having them over to your dorm room, and then maybe taking them around campus for a little bit. So it's definitely look for opportunities so that you can decide if... Um, Helping other people is something you want to do. That's yeah. more from a special education side of things. Yeah, for me, I'll say in high school I volunteered at the Boys and Girls Club. And I think I did it like once or twice a week and we would go and help them with their homework and like interact with the kids. So that that was a good thing to do. And I also worked at a summer day camp, which I know mm. Kel Kelly worked at a day camp for... Um, Ever. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, that's something else. Uh, I worked at a Christian day camp, so we actually got to teach Bible. So I got a little bit of a taste of what teaching kind of sort of felt like, you know, in a little tiny way. Um, so yeah, definitely immerse yourself with students and kids and see, you know, how you do interacting with them. But she is, I mean, she has time, but that would be a good way to get her feet yeah. wet. The other thing I would suggest, if you're 16, you're probably going to start looking at colleges soon. Look for a college that has you student teaching early on in your school experience. We both went to Millersville, and Millersville, you start student teaching your freshman year. You go like four hours a week your first semester, and that was huge because I had some friends who were really into teaching until they started student teaching, and they were like, too. this is not what I thought it was going to be like, and ended up changing majors. And that's so important yeah. to figure that out as a freshman. Yeah, and thankfully they did it early because they were able to transfer all their credits over to another program where I had other friends who went to really expensive private schools who didn't student teach until their senior year and got there and just couldn't and do it. And that's too they, late. Yeah, sort and of. now you have... You know, $60,000 worth of debt for something that you're not interested in doing. Yeah. So I would recommend looking for volunteer opportunities as a teenager. And then when you start looking for schools, look for early student teaching. Yeah. So our next question is from Sarah and her rivalry name. Smaffit? Smaffit. We weren't sure how to say it. <laughs> um, and her question was... Do you when knit for Christmas? You? Oh, do you knit for Christmas? Our answer to that is a big fat yes, we do. This year we do. We still do. I've done it for a couple of years. I know you have for a couple yeah. of years. She said, how do you budget and plan your time for Christmas knitting? And this, I thought this was a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, I think both of our answers for planning is we kind of wait too long and then we're like, oh, hey, whoops. Christmas is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Every year, I tell myself, I'm not going to do that next year. Next year, I'm going to start in September. <laughs> I'm going to start in the summer. I'm going to start in October. It never really happens no. that way. So. Especially not this year with the way our lives have been going. Like, yeah. September, October, November flew by. I texted, was, this is funny, I texted Kelly, like, last week. I haven't even started Christmas inning yet. And she was like, I don't know what you said. Oh, girl. And I was like, are you in the same boat? And she was like, 
I'm the captain. Yeah, so. <laughs> like, I built that boat. <laughs> Last year for Christmas, I finished a gift in the car on the way to the party that it had to be exchanged at. The one thing I would recommend for this, um, and it was my savior last year, the Jimmy Beans Wool does a thing called beanie bags. They're, I'm doing this because this is the size you get. There's a small <laughs> beanie bag and then I think they do a larger bag. It's a subscription. It's really affordable. I want to say maybe $10 a month. But they send you all the yarn you need for a small pattern. And last year, that's how I got like five or six of my Christmas gifts. The one was a wine bottle cozy. So you had all the yarn. It took me maybe a half an hour. That's the one I finished in the car on the way there. Um, but that's something... Because they send it to you every month, if you just knit up the thing that's in there and keep it in the bag you have a gift on hand for $10 and it's not something that you spent money on an entire skein of yarn and if you're giving it to someone who maybe isn't super knit worthy. There were like little finger puppets the one month, there was a cell phone case, so it's little stuff but good idea to maybe sign yourself up for one of those. Yeah, and for me I was gonna say kind of the way I do it, like I, I have those um, socks on the needles for my mom and then I'm working on this bunny and the socks are awesome for taking out places, and I still work at an amusement park and um, part-times, and I can just do it mindlessly. I don't even have to look at what I'm doing. So that one's really good for taking out and working on, whereas this bunny takes a little more pattern looking at, and um, it's more a little bit more tedious. So this is something I tend to work on if I'm at home watching Netflix. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend having, like, a few going and you know some are better for taking out than others and along with what you said with the little kits um, I'm also planning on making little ornaments and I know a lot of you watchers probably do this too but there's cute little free patterns on Ravelry socks, little socks. stockings and little sweaters and if you're a big sock knitter you probably already have leftover yarn that you could use so I mean when you mention budget that kind of plays in you already have it mm -hmm. and you can use up your stash and it's tiny shouldn't take that long yeah. so that's a good idea too. and even if you stuck one of those like over a bottle of wine and who has not love great. a handmade ornament yeah super cute yeah so there's those were two awesome questions and really we haven't question. answered questions in a really long time oh and she also asked for knitting about your knitting for yourself and you can see what we just kind of like put ours to the side yeah well I do still knitting. pick mine up like that's what I'm doing um, my before bed knitting is knitting for myself yeah. um yeah so there's our whole episode thanks again for staying with us if you came long, back long thanks for coming back yeah. we so were exciting. like oh we're gonna lose all our People. watchers. Our peeps. So yeah, thanks for coming back and for sticking with us and we'll see you sooner rather than later. Hopefully.